Hi guys and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter. But before I go into this review, I just want to say that I have now reached a thousand subscribers. It has taken me this long to achieve it, but I finally have done. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has stood by me and supported me over the years. As well as those of you who have continued to watch my content. It really does mean a lot. And I just can't thank you all enough, so to say thank you, I'm going to do two special videos, which are both going to be reviews. And to make it even more special, <laughs> these are models that I bought from Warley the previous weekend. Because by the time this video goes up, it would have been the previous weekend when I bought these models. I'm sure most of you have all seen the Warley footage by now, which is now uploaded and up on the internet. If you haven't, then go and watch it. But I will put a link in the description below, or even one of those fancy YouTube cards up, up, up on the screen. So the models I have now, they both did not come from Invicta Rail, which as you can just about make out on the bag in the photo. One of them did come from Invicta Rail, the other model, because there are three new models, two of them which are locomotives, the other model, the, lo the other locomotive, came from the stand that was opposite the Invicta Rail stand. Now, I can't remember which stand that was, but I'm sure one of you will, and if you know, then do drop a comment below if any of you went to Warley, that is, and went by that stand, because I can't really remember off the top of my head. So what do we have in the bag, then? Well, for those of you on Twitter and Facebook, you will already know about this, but obviously if you're not on either of those sites, then you will not know until now. But what we have in the bag is a Dapple Class 52 Western, as well as a Backman LMS livery Class G2A, otherwise known as the Super D. And we also have a wagon, which this one is actually a Collector Club model, because I have rejoined the Batman Collectors Club and I got this wagon for free, which is a bonus. So, we have three new models to be looked at, two of which are to be reviewed. The other model, which is the wagon, is not going to be reviewed, but it shall feature in one of the reviews. So, what are we going to look at in this review? Well, in this review, we are going to be having a look at the Dapple Class 52 Western, as I have already promised on both Twitter and Facebook that this was going to be the first of these reviews. So, that is what we're going to review today. <laughs> So like I said, we're going to be reviewing the Dapple Class 52 Western, which this is going to be the first Dapple locomotive I've ever owned. I've only ever bought Dapple wagons, I've never had a Dapple locomotive before, so this is going to be something quite special. Now, I have been meaning to get hold of a Western for ages now, because before I only ever had a Hymek and the Warship, which you've seen already in previous review videos that I've done a while ago but I never had a western until now and so that was one of the things that I wanted to guess while I was at Warley is a dapper western if I came across one and so eventually I came to this stand and there on the stand there were several of these dapper westerns again I can't remember the company now of the stand who was selling them. It wasn't on the Dapple stand, this was on a stand by some model shop, but I just can't remember who it was now, but it was opposite the Invicta Rail stand, which is where I got the G2A from, as a matter of fact. 
And so there were several of the Dapper Westerns, and that's where I got this particular model from. Now, they had several Westerns on the stand. Most of them were in BR Blue, pristine, although one of them was weathered. Now, don't get me wrong, I've got no problem with the BR Blue livery. I don't hate it, because I do really like the BR Blue livery, but I do already have BR Blue livery locomotives in the fleet already. This was the one I wanted, which is D1012 Western Firebrand in the BR Maroon livery with the small yellow warning panel because I went for this livery because while I do have Maroon livery locomotives already, which is the LMS Maroon livery, I don't have any BR Maroon livery diesel locomotives, I only have Maroon steam locomotives. So this is the reason why I wanted a Maroon livery one and I think personally that the BR Maroon livery loco on the Class 52 Western is one of the nicest liveries that you can... So first of all we come onto the packaging which is very Helge-esque because this is the sort of packaging that Helge used once upon a time it is very rigid firm box so you could stamp up and down on this all day and it wouldn't get squashed or anything and one thing I do like in particular about this box is not just the design on the front of the drawing of the Western but the Dapple logo is embossed so you can actually feel the logo on the box which is quite nice as you don't really get that with most manufacturers but also I love the colour of the box as well the blue and the silver and the white stripe it's very nice in my opinion I know it's just the box but I do really quite like the design so it's not something bland to look at so then we take off the foam cover as you can see this is what I'm on about being Helgen esque because Dapol are using the foam packaging like Helgen used to use and I say used to because they don't use it anymore V trains also use it as well but it's quite heavy this model is in the box and there it is in the packaging and it already looks stunning and I haven't even took it out of the packaging yet so we'll first come on to the bag of details that we get in the box so first of all we have the etched metal nameplate and the etched metal number plate and the builders plates as well which you fit on separately and this is quite a nice touch this is something you don't get with many manufacturers because not all manufacturers apply metal etched nameplates with the models and so it's really quite nice that they've done this and I have added them on the model which you shall see later on so it's quite nice that Dapple have done this so moving on from the nine plates, we now come on to this little plastic tub which is full of details in it. Which is something you don't see with the manufacturers, so it's nice that Helgen have done this. So first of all we come on to this little bag. And in this bag of details, these are details which are only to be added to the model if we're going to display it. Which it does mention in the instructions that, the, that these details must only go on the local if you're going to display it because otherwise if you do put these on then the model won't really be able to be run as well on the layout basically so these are di display purpose only details and then once we've done that we come onto this bag of details which is brewing with them and so something I'm going to do for the first time in this video is I'm going to open up this bag and show you the little details one by one. Something I don't usually do but because there's so much details in there I thought I might as well do it. So first of all we get this bit of detail which I'm not sure what it's for but that's to fix on the locomotive. We then get the couplings which they are NEM couplings and they're the slim tension ones as well. You get two of those in here. Here's the other one. Then come on to another one of those details. I don't know what they are, but they're there anyway. As well as another. That is a some sort of vacuum pipe, but that basically goes onto one of the wheels. Now these details, they fix onto the roof, and believe me, they, they are a nightmare to put them on, seriously. There's another detail there. You do also get 
plastic dummy chain link couplings to fix on the hooks which is a nice little feature to some other details there then you do get your vacuum pipes as well which are painted as well which is a very nice thing although they do come painted with most manufacturers anyway and they are quite nice little bits of detail to add but again these are all optional details so you don't have to put them on but they look nice when you do put them on now these details they are to fix just by the bogies just under the steps basically where the loco is then we come on to the rest of the details so in here we have these two air dams which I believe they are called now I should point out that these are most likely spares because the model already has these on so I'm guessing if the ones that the already fitted on the model if they're damaged or whatever or if you wish to change them and swap them over then that's what these are there for but they're there anyway but it's nice that Dapple have done that it's nice to see that they've included some spares and that's not all you get you also get this which is a sheet of train reporting numbers and the idea is with these that you put them on the head code boxes so you can basically add whichever head code you want but believe it or not these are actually stickers so you can just simply stick them on the head code boxes which is a nice little thing that Hilton have done that you don't get that with very many often manufacturers or should I say you don't get it very often with manufacturers because normally you have to take off the head code panels and fix them inside so it's nice to see that Dapple have gone to the limits and basically made them as sticky so you can just simply stick them on the front which is nice back to the unboxing so we take out the plastic packaging and we can now put the bot to one side personally I'm not very keen on the foam packaging because I don't think it's ideal but being used anyway so I can't really complain much but there we go. But that's just my own personal opinion. So this is the packaging that we're all used to by now. We just simply remove the plastic cover which comes off very easily. And then once that's done we just take it to one side. And we are now free to have a look at the instructions the manual inside the packaging so it's the glossy paper that we have here so first of all these are the instructions on the frontier get brief history on the class 52 and a bit on the instructions as well such as the specifications it talked about the maintenance of the model and the various details it has and the lubrication it gives a diagram of where to put the oil And then in solid, it talks about DCC and how to do so. The options for the valance and best continuing to European products and all that. And it also tells you where to fix the details on by this diagram here. And then it talks about these specific details here. So, yeah, these are the valances. I thought they were the air dams, but no, those parts I mentioned earlier that I thought were air dams, the valances. But I suppose you could call them air dams if you wanted. It, mentions about the specific details here fixed by the bogies are actually only to have it as a model on static display on a shelf which is what I mentioned earlier and then we come on to this which this is basically just a mechanical warranty 20 month mechanical warranty basically so it's nothing particularly amazingly interesting but it's something that most manufacturers put in with the models anyway nowadays so it's nothing really new we're all used to them by now
and now all that's left to do is to undo the box flap and then lift off the top of the box and then we just lift the local house now this plastic packaging is slightly different to what Home and Batman have because it's not resting in a giant plastic casing because normally have those dents in the bottom of the box so the wheels can just simply slot into but you don't get it with this box so it, it is slightly different but there we go and you also have these big pieces of foam on the inside of the packaging to protect the model inside but we'll just put the packaging to one side and we're on now free to have a look at the loco now The first thing we're going to talk about is the weight, as I always do with these reviews, and this model really is quite heavy, but we need the weight because it's very important. You don't see traction tyres on models anymore because the weight does all the work, and the idea of the weight is that it creates the traction so that the locomotive can pull your stock around the lake, because if this model didn't have any weight in it, then it wouldn't be able to pull anything. It's as simple as that, really. Moving on to the detail now, and so first of all we'll talk about the buffers, which are indeed sprung, so if you like the sprung buffers it'll keep you happy, but I don't have much care for them there anyway. These buffers however are made out of plastic, so they're not metal, but oh well, we can't be the choosers. One thing Dapple has done on this end of the loco is they've already added some of the vacuum pipes on already, and that's quite nice because that's not something you see with most manufacturers. That's something you normally see with Halogen, and Batman have done it on occasion. An example of Batman is the new tooled Class 40, where they've already added the vacuum pipes on. On the other end, though, there's no vacuum pipes on, so it's left for you to detail it up if you want. But that's quite nice that they've done that. Now we come on to the front of the locomotive, and on the front you can see there's a separately fitted metal handrail at the top, and there's a couple of separately fitted handrails as well on the front of the loco as well as well as separately fitted lamp irons you've also got warning signs and this model does have working lights which you shall see later in the video and also you've got that half yellow warning panel which they've got the correct shade of yellow which looks stunning on the livery we then move on to the glazing which it's fitted in all the cab windows as it should be and I do love the silver paint round the front of the windows which is something you do see on this livery on the westerns in reality so well done to Dapple for including that feature and also we do have separately fitted window wipers as well we also have a painted cab interior inside the cab which is fantastic all the controls and even the seats are painted and it just looks stunning not something that every manufacturer does, this is mostly Hornby that paint the cab interiors, although Batman have done it on occasion, but it's nice to see other manufacturers paint the inside of the interiors because it adds to the detail and the realism of the model. We also have a warning sign by the door, which the door itself doesn't open, but we don't really need those features to be honest. And we also have a nice door handle there and separately fitted metal handrails on the side of the door as well as the intread on the door there, which is really nice. One thing you should be able to see on this side of the cab, you can only just about see it, but there are some very small dots on the side of the cab, and that is actually where to put the number plates on. And they've also done the same thing for putting the name plates on as well. And it's quite nice that they've done that, as opposed to having the number plates and the name plates crisply printed on this model so that's something different that you don't see with any other manufacturer do so it's quite interesting that they've done that and also got a nice red circle there printed on the side which is to do with its perification of some sort or something like that but it's there and it's printed and it's there on, like on the real thing as well we now move on to the bogies of the class 52 and one thing that's unique about this locomotive not just on the model but in reality is that the two outer wheels are exposed but the middle wheel is covered by basically a small piece of frame with springs on 
and that's accurate just like on the real locomotive and just by that rear drive wheel there just by the door you can see a cable which has been separately added and it's just like on the real thing and it looks fantastic we now move on to the fuel tank but what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about it in sections because it is quite a big fuel tank so first of all we'll come on to this bit of detail which has painted bits on it which is very nice inside the fuel tank and there's a few rivets around that we also have some more rivets as well on this part of the fuel tank as well as some storage units of some sort and at this end of the fuel tank you have some more storage units as well which is a very nice bit of detail to have you also have this curious bit of detail here which bit of detail is shown in the picture just above the drive wheel there I have no idea what this bit of detail is for or what it does but it's there and it's there on the real locomotive so it's good to see it on the model and we also have this which is the dial for the fuel tank which is painted up and it looks really nice we also have the grills of the class 52 western and have a very nice texture feel to them and the grills is always a great bit of detail to have on these locomotives moving on to the side windows which have glazing in all the windows which is brilliant and also we have the trims of the windows that are painted silver which is a great bit of detail to have but also inside these windows you can actually see the mechanism of the model which is great because in reality you can actually see the mechanism of the engine in reality because in reality this would be the engine room that you could see into and so I think it's brilliant that you can actually see inside of the model so thumbs up for Dapple for that we then move on to the other end of the cab which you can see the BR emblem there crisply printed on the side you can also see a warning sign as well and again you have that silver paint around the cab windows as well as the separately fitted metal handrails on the door there and the door handle and the door that doesn't open but doesn't need to anyway moving on to the other end of the cab the detail is pretty much the same we've got the separately fitted window wipers there and the separately fitted metal handrails and lamp irons and again the small yellow warning panel and again just like the other end the buffers are sprung and they're made of plastic as well as you can see here is the other valance which on this end it's exposed so you can fit the NEM coupling into which you can just about glimpse the NEM socket there and again this end there's no details fitted this is the end that you can detail yourself and I might as well show you the cab interior on this end of the cab because the detail in this end of the cab is actually different to the details in the other end of the cab <laughs> as I mentioned earlier so it is worth showing and mentioning in the video moving on to the livery which is just absolutely bang on not just because that the shade of maroon is correct which is that is what we want because the livery is just as important as the model itself but the application of the paint it's very neat and it's a even coat of paint as well and there's no errors in the paintwork which is what we don't want to see really at the end of the day it's a stunning paint job and it looks superb moving on to the roof detail which you do have to apply some of it yourself as I mentioned earlier so I will talk about the detail that's already there because I have since the time I've taken these photos I've added some of the detail on the roof which you will see in a while in the video so first of all we have the wire mesh grills with the fans which on each end of the loco you get four fans which I should point out the fans do not spin but it doesn't bother me at all if they don't spin because it's a feature that we don't really need on a model not to mention it's a thing that Hornby used to do but they've now done away with the idea anyway so regardless it's not going to matter anyway moving on to the other details you can see all the holes where the very small details have to go into and trust me they are very small but the roof is painted black which looks very nice and again it's like on the local in reality and also you can just about see that there's an exhaust there for all the diesel fumes to come out of 
Now before we see the model running around on the layout, I'm going to show you the details of fitted. So I fitted the number plates and the name plates using double sided adhesive tape. And that vacuum pipe cable sort of thing has been added on both sides of the loco on the rear drive wheel, like you do see on reality. I've also added a chain link coupling on this end of the loco which looks really nice. And I've also added the train reporting numbers, but it's different on both ends. So this one it's 1A14, and on this end it's 1B72. They do look a bit wonky, but I did correct that later on. And also I've added the coupling as well, on this end of the logo. Some of the detail on the roof has gone on, as you can just about see, but it was an absolute nightmare, believe me. They're not easy to put on, so most of them are there, but some of them have come off in the process of trying to fit that coupling on. But it doesn't matter anyway, at least some of them are there. I've also on the other end, sorry, the other side, added the number plates and name plates. Interestingly though, the shed plates, I don't know where to fit them because they don't seem to go anywhere on the logo. I've looked at many photos of the Westerns in reality and I've also seen the locomotives in reality and they don't seem to have the shed plates anyway, so I've put them to one side and not bothered adding them. We now come on to the running of the model, and the model ran smoothly around the lanes with no problems to weather. There was no grinding noises, no stuttering movement, or motors burning out, or anything that we should not be expecting these models when we first get them. Brand new, once they're opened out the box, because that's not what we should be experiencing. This is what we should be getting straight out of the box. Smooth, superb running. And here are the working lights, which we do have the interior lights at the one end lit up, and the headlight boards, as well as one of those small lights, also light up, as you can just about make out. As you can see, the lights have been turned off, so you can see them more clearly. Now we come on to the loaded test run, which the Western was pulling the rake and maroon coaches around the layout, and the Western just goes so well with the coaches because, well, the model is maroon and so are the coaches. But this shows why the weight is important, because without the weight, the model wouldn't be able to pull the coaches, let alone itself, so this is why the weight is so important in these models. Not just the Westerns in general, but with all models.
So overall, the Dapple Western is a superb model and I cannot pick a fault with it. Yes, I know those details that you have to fix on the roof are quite fiddly and not easy to put on because they are a bit of a headache to do, but that's just a minor little thing though. It doesn't really detract from the model, nor does it let it down, because it's just a fantastic model. Superb detail, excellent running quality and performance, and I just can't really pick a fault with this. It. It's just fantastic. So, thumbs up to Dapple, you have a stunning model here. So now I do look forward to purchasing some of your other logo models in the future. So overall, I went the Dapple Class 52 Western a 10 out of 10. This has been Class 47 Peter, reviewing the Dapple Western, and I'll see you again soon for next time when I'll be reviewing the Backman G2A, but until then, Take care.